Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today for an overview of our Fuel Tower smart lockers. Feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar, and we'll also have time for questions at the end. I'm Savannah Waller, and I'm a marketing coordinator here at Lock and Charge. And our presenter today is Katie Short, and she's a territory manager at Lock and Charge. And with that, I'll turn it over to Katie. Hi, uh, this is our last and final uh, webinar from the series of our demo room tour. Um, and we saved the fuel tower for the last just because it's got a bunch of different feature sets that we want to kind of cover. Um, first and foremost, so what I want to do, especially because I know we have some people on here that have not seen the actual fuel tower, the hardware itself. I'm going to talk to the hardware and kind of give you a tour of what it is and then like the inside of it. And then we can go into all the like the feature sets and the, the problems that it has solved for a bunch of different districts. Um, so first and foremost, I kind of want to go over that tower itself. Um, so right now you can see we have a fuel 15 and then we also have our fuel five. So the fuel 15 and the five are the exact same thing. Other, uh, um, the only difference is, is the fuel 15 will hold 15 devices and the fuel five will hold five devices. Um, if you're ever interested in testing out our fuel tower in your district, we do ship the fuel five as a demo unit. So you are able to kind of get your hands on it and play around with it. So just keep that in your back pocket for future sense if it's something that you think might be something that will help you. Um, so obviously you can see it's a locker system. It's got a LED panel that gives you the prompts with an RFID reader and a keypad. So the districts that I work with, a lot of the times the school or the students aren't using RFID badges. They use the keypad to unlock the, the bay, but the staff and the direct and like the tech directors will use the RFID. So you are able to program RFID badges. And then a lot of the times we work, uh, we work with schools that integrate with Active Directory. So they push that information so the students would actually use their student ID to unlock a bay. Um, I'm gonna actually open up a bay in uh, the fuel five, so you can see inside what it looks like. So we're gonna go on to number two. It's gonna ask me to enter a pin. And then inside each bay, it's probably kind of hard to see, so we apologize if it's, it's a little dark, but there is a USB port and a standard outlet. So you are able to charge more than one device if you wanted to. So a lot of students will charge their cell phone and their device over lunch. You have that ability. So technically this could actually hold 10 devices and the Fuel 15 could hold 30 devices. We do, we did actually just update this because a lot of schools that we worked with asked about if they pre-cabled this with their cables that they standardized with devices, um, if, they, if there was a way to lock them in place. So we do have a retention kit that we just um, listed probably two weeks ago for this USB port and also for lightning cables in this specific make and model of the fuel tower. And then I also have a lot of school districts that are leveraging the ventilation in the back. So there's plenty of ventilation in the back for the devices to breathe, but we have schools using zip ties to keep those cables in place so students can't steal them or take them home or teachers because teachers actually are the worst out of all of them is what I hear at least. All right, so I'm gonna shut this door. And now I'm gonna kind of explain the color system just because I know that I didn't go over that yet. So green means the bay is available. Black means the bay was taken offline, usually because it's a break fix workflow. So you don't want any student to access that bay because they put a broken device in and took out a loaner. And then white means this is assigned to a specific student who opened up that bay with their, with their pin code. And it will clear out once that student comes back and does an iteration with the pin code to return that device. And then on top of here, so this is actually a network kit. This is not a part of the Fuel 15. This is an accessory item. So this is if you need to do hardwire updates. So this would hold your network switch. We don't provide the switch. It's just a place to like house it. And then where you can plug into the cables. Because actually one thing I didn't mention, and I apologize, in each bay, there is also an ethernet port. So you are able to do hardwire updates. Majority of the schools I work with though, they do use an MDM. So the hardwiring updates is not something that they necessarily need. 
Um, so then if you want to come over here, I'm going to show you inside. So if you ever have a full power outage, you still are able to get inside for each bay. So there is a key. I have this on a, a jar just so it's not so awkward for me to unlock it, but it does come with a key. So there's no access for students. Uh, uh, it's more for your tech directors to keep. Um, but here is where all of your ethernet cables string along into each bay. And then if you have a full power outage, it's uh, all you have to do is open this tower and there's a screw on each actual bay. You just press on it and it will pop open. Any questions on any of that? Yeah, Katie, one question. Can either of these be like secured to the wall or mounted to the wall? Yeah, so you can definitely tether the Fuel 15 and then there is a mount kit for the Fuel 5. So you, you technically can, so you don't have to worry about it getting tipped over or anything like that. Okay, and Katie, you mentioned the two, um, the USB port and then the plug-in in each bay. Um, can you possibly like mix and match laptops and iPads in yeah, the Fuel yeah. Tower? So um, you can definitely have both in there. Obviously, like it's going to use that USB port or that outlet or an outlet. So you could have two devices at once if you wanted to. OK, cool. So yeah, so now we can kind of talk about some of the feature sets and a lot of the frustrations we hear from districts because of they were forced to go one to one in the pen during the pandemic. So students now are bringing their devices home which also means they're breaking their devices more often or they're forgetting them at home or they're not fully charged. So a lot of the times what we see is three different workflows that, that uh, schools are leveraging to kind of ease that problem. Um, first and foremost, break fix and loaner environments where a student breaks their device and now they have to figure out you know, like who to talk to, whether it's their teacher or their tech director, or if they use a ticketing system, they have to fill out a ticketing or a ticket. And then there's the manual work of swapping out the devices. And a lot of the times right now it's falling on the media specialists. So they're spending like two to three hours just like tracking students down, filling out their information, whether it's the asset tag and the student. Um, so it's, a, it's taking a ton of time. So either, so not only are the students not ready to learn, but then also the teacher is waiting for these students as well as the tech directors or media specialists are wasting their time to do this exchange of devices and track that. So now we've, uh, with the fuel tower, what you're able to do is automate that process. So you can have this completely full with loaners for students that forget to charge or if they break their device and utilize their ticketing system and fill out a ticket and the, the ticket can basically send or tell the student which bay to go to if it's available and exchange their broken device for a loaner. And it's all trapped in the cloud with lock and charge. Or if you have a ticketing system, you can integrate with the tower. So it's fully automated. So it's gonna track not only who opened what at what time, but also that asset, whether it's the broken one, uh, the broken one and also that loaner. So it's gonna follow that student. So you know who took out what. Um, so I'm actually going to show you how you would utilize this tower for a break fix. So in the cloud, which is what is the brains behind the actual fuel tower, it's allowing you to do that, that assigning of bays for a specific student, as well as tracking that individual and tracking all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a bay. This was already a, like a ticket that was sent to the tech team and they assigned a bay to this specific user because they had a broken device. So I'm going to put a broken device in bay number two and the bay will actually go offline because there's a way to take the bay offline when a student accesses it with a broken device. So I'm just going to go in, put in my pin, I'm going to pop open. I'm going to take out or put in my broken device, take out the loaner. And now the bay will go offline. So that is actually a notification for the tech team that there is a broken device behind that, that they need to go and retrieve that device and swap it out for a loaner. So in the back end with either your ticketing system or with the cloud, it's going to track that individual. They open that door and they took out the loaner. Does that make sense? Any questions regarding that?
Katie, you mentioned a few uh, ticketing systems, or you mentioned uh, uh, using a ticketing system. Do the fuel towers, can they um, integrate with any ticketing system or is there certain? Yeah, ways? yeah. So yes and no. So we have fully integrated with Incident IQ and Learn 21. So there is like an application that is ready to work immediately. But if you have a ticketing system that has like an, uh, a ticketing system that you're able to code with our fuel tower, our fuel tower actually has an open API. So you could code using that and create create a workflow that will work um because i have a lot of schools that actually just code themselves and they they created a way to make it work um but like i said the ones that are ready and uh, work immediately is the learn 21 one-to-one -one manager and incident iq any other questions And then in terms of a loaner environment, it's the same iteration. The only difference is you're not gonna take the bay offline because the student didn't break the device. What you're going to do is it's gonna be assigned to them for the rest of the day because they're gonna bring that device back. So for this iteration, all the student would do is go up to the tower, put in their student ID number, open that bay, grab their loaner and shut the door. And this will actually go to white, which means there's a reservation on there. And that that will be white until they go back at the end of the day to put their loaner back. But that's all tracked in the cloud. So it's going to say Katie Short went up to bay number three at 11.15. Um, so you know exactly who has that, that device um, and at what time they, they took that device out. All right, any questions on the break, fix, or loaner workflows? All right, we'll jump into then public charging. So a lot of the times now, like I said, and, um, now that students have the devices and they're charging them at home, they have the responsibility of charging those devices, but we also know students are not great at doing that. They, they forget to charge, and so they're not really ready for, for learning. And that seems to be a big problem. And another thing now with going one-to-one, -one, schools are now kind of not util utilizing those uh, carts in the classroom because they don't need to because the students are, are supposed to have them charge. So they, they don't have a really a great place to charge these devices. So what we've been finding out is schools are using these in like the cafeteria so they have a place to charge over lunch or even like a gymnasium where they can't bring their cell phones. They don't need their devices. So they have a place to charge that's uh, easy and ready and available where they can just go up, put their device in, charge it for an hour and come back. Um, and that really does seem to be like a, a great solution for schools that are going to one-to-one. -one. Um, and then one thing also that we have heard since the pandemic is some students don't feel safe like at home to even bring a device or have that liability on them. This is another great solution that you could potentially use for those students overnight to charge so they have a device when they get to school um, the next day. So I'm gonna just show you the public charging. I kind of already did that when I showed you inside the bay, but all you do is go up to the tower. It's, um, there are two different modes, which I should have talked about. So you in the cloud, you can have it in admin mode, which does all the signing and tracking and has all the, re like the reporting of who opened what, um, and that's in, the admin mode, but then if you want to go into public charging where a student just creates their own pin, puts their device in, leaves for an hour, comes back, puts that pin in again, and then the bay is available for someone else, kind of like a hotel safe, that's called public charging mode. So we have this tower right now that I did the break fix uh, scenarios in admin mode, and this tower is in public mode. So I'll quick go in here and put in uh, bay number one, and it's going to ask to create a pin and confirm your pin. So I'm just gonna confirm my pin. And then now it's ready for me to use for like during lunchtime or during gym, put my device in, shut that door, leave for an hour. And then when I come back, all I have to do is remember that pin and the bay is available. So it is ready for me to grab my device and I'm ready for class. I have um, specific districts that are using this 
for, um, especially over lunch, because they don't want their students to eat on top of their lunch, or they're like forgetting their devices and their, their, their uh, other peers are taking their devices. So they're like losing their devices or swapping them out. So this is a really good way to get them fully charged for their next class, but also house them safely. So they're not getting eaten on or breaking. Any questions on any of that? Yeah, Katie, one question. Um, is it to so say you have one tower in public mode? Is it pretty easy to switch between admin um, mode and public charging mode? Yeah. So if you are an admin, you can program the RFID. Uh, so you can actually do it on the physical tower and it's only the prompts are shown for the admin, but then in the cloud, it's just a button you click and it takes probably like a couple minutes to re reboot the tower in either mode. Okay. And Katie, do the towers come uh, fully assembled or when they arrive, is there any assembly required? Nope, you just would have to plug in and that's about it. Or if you wanna hardwire in. So I didn't mention this and this is a good thing that came up. So you can either, it can be on the wireless or you can hardwire it in um, through the network. Okay. There are any other questions? All right, so I will post Katie's contact info. Oh, we do have a question in the okay. chat. Um, a question from Colton is, do you know if you could use a barcode scanner with the tower? Um, not currently, but I do know that's something that we really are thinking about incorporating or integrating with. But as of right now, the answer is no. But that is definitely something that has come up, especially because we have schools using it as kind of almost like a, um, a kiosk where they would scan their ID to purchase maybe like a charger they like lost or um, other types of things that they could purchase and charge to their student account. Um, so I definitely think that's on our roadmap, but I can't give you like a hard date of when that would be. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And that's like a lot of the times what I hear from other schools is they're looking to do something like that. So it's definitely something we've heard and it's, it's definitely um, been sent to our developers. It's just more or less that we got to just figure out when that's going to happen because I definitely think it would be worth it. And then, sorry, I missed the last one. Oh, Kitty, the, another question in the chat is, what is the list price of the Fuel 5 model? Yeah, so with the cloud, it's uh, this is MSRP, so through a reseller, because we do not sell direct, is $3,500. Um, that, that also includes the software for three years. So that includes the cloud that would integrate with ticketing systems that you'd use. Um, and like I said, through a reseller, that price would be cheaper. All right, any other questions? All right, I um, just posted Katie's contact information and my contact information in the chat. So if you have any follow-up questions after the webinar, feel free to reach out to either of us. And we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar shortly. So keep an eye out for that in your inbox. And thanks again to Katie for presenting today. Thank you, everybody.